This is the buttons and buttonholes block. Firstly, take two pieces of fabric and fold one of them along the long edge one and a half centimeters. Then iron this flat. Then fold it again two and a half centimeters and iron flat. Pin along the bottom edge quite close to the edge. Then in a straight stitch, so straight close to the edge. Your stitching should be about 2 millimeters from the folded edge. This is how the back looks. And this is the front. Sew the other piece of fabric in the same way. Fold it over one and a half centimeters, then another two and a half centimeters, and iron it flat. Then pin along the lower edge, quite close to the edge. Sew straight stitch close to the edge, the same way as before. Now make a covered button, like this one. Firstly, take a small piece of fabric and push it face down into the button maker. Then, push the front piece of a self-covered button into the fabric. Then trim roughly around the fabric with scissors. Then push the cut edge of the fabric into the back of the button. Then take the back button piece and squash it into the front using the button maker. Then your button will be finished and you can just pop it out. Take your two pieces of fabric and decide which one will be on top. Then place the fabrics opposite each other with buttons in position. Then draw a mark on the opposite fabric in line with the side of the button. In this example, the pink fabric will be the one that is on the top. Use a buttonhole foot and put it on your machine. You need to put a button in the back of the buttonhole foot. This is so that it can measure the size of the buttonhole. It clips onto the machine just like a normal presser foot does. You need to pull down this black lever. It won't work if you don't do this. Choose a buttonhole stitch on your machine. Then the pencil mark should be in the centre of the square on the buttonhole foot. Lower the presser foot and start sewing. The machine will do all the work in making the buttonhole. It's automatic, so all you need to do is put your foot down on the foot pedal and let it do its job. Keep sewing until the buttonhole is completely finished. You will know when it's finished because the machine will beep and stop sewing. Change the button in the back of the foot for each buttonhole. This is to make sure the buttonholes are the right size for the button. Sew your three buttonholes all the same way. This is how the piece of fabric should look with the three buttonholes. Pin across the end of the buttonhole. and then cut each buttonhole open with a quick unpick. The pin is a stopper so that you don't rip through the end of the buttonhole. Make sure you do this really carefully. Mark the placement of the buttons on the opposite piece of fabric. They should be opposite the center of the buttonholes. Then thread a hand needle and tie the two ends together in a double knot. 
This thread will be used to sew on your buttons. Sew each button in place on top of the pencil marks that you made before. It's easiest to do this by only looking at the front of the fabric. Don't keep turning your fabric over and looking at the back. Hold on with one hand and only look at the front. Then once the button is secured, turn the fabric over and tie a double knot in the back. Go through a little bit of fabric like this, create a loop, then put your needle back through the loop and pull it tight. Do this twice. Then your finished buttons and buttonholes will look like this.